Hey, good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Tuesday, the fifth day of December 2023. I hope this Tuesday finds you safe and healthy and your family safe and healthy and the needs of you and your family in terms of food and shelter and clothing as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field who work along with first responders, always risking their lives to save lives. And those also who pick up garbage to keep our streets clean and our cities disease free. And those that make deliveries for us from places like Amazon and FedEx and uh, USPS, the US Postal Service and other places for our convenience. Double blessing on the men and women that are out here trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover. The teenagers and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. The victims also of pornography and child pornography, human trafficking and sex slavery. Double curses on those perpetrators. Double curses on those profiteers and double curses on those perverts that create this heinous and human destroying industry. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. 600,000, almost 600,000, 580 some thousand men, women, and children, and increasingly a lot of senior citizens living in their cars and on the streets, and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. There's a basketball game scheduled tonight. The New York Knicks are in Milwaukee to play Milwaukee Bucks as part of the in season tournament. Now, last night I watched, of course, Boston lose. To Indiana. Now, as much as Indiana is also our competitor, it's always good to watch the Celtics lose. You know, it was interesting. Earlier this year, when the Knicks played the Celtics, I had Celtics fan come on my channel talking about, oh, the Knicks think the Celtics got him now. We got KP. And I told that fan at the time, KP played 38 minutes against the Knicks. If you keep playing him 38 minutes, he ain't going to be around in the playoffs. And laugh, laugh. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, let's see how funny it is now. <laughs> KP played 30 minutes a game and he's out and I'm going to tell you something if they keep playing him 30 minutes a game he won't be available in the playoffs so last night's game showed the vulnerability of Boston without KP that was the big thing to me because um, Tatum is going to be Tatum he is all world right now at this point in life Tatum is one of the five best players on planet Earth. Okay? You got Tatum. You got Giannis. Okay? He's one of the five best basketball players on the planet. You can know what he's going to do. And you can't do nothing about it. Like last night, I saw a, one play epitomized it. There's no, he got the ball on the left block or mid, mid range. He goes into his elite footwork, and he goes to do his turnaround jump shot. Everybody in the world knows he's going to do that. And he does it. He gets fouled. The guy's all over him. I think it was Neesmith all over him. And he scores. <laughs> and he gets the foul. It was like nothing you could do about that. Now, Brown is, is a great talent also. Don't get me wrong. But Tatum is on another level. Really, he is. And so you have guys like that. But KP is that, you know, you have Tatum, which is the eighth dude, the alpha dog. Then you got a couple of beta dogs in Brown and would be KP. You traded away your heart and soul in Marcus Smart. You traded away Robert Williams III. You traded away La uh, uh, Langdon. Um, I'm sorry. What's this guy boy name? You traded the boy that you, you traded your six man of the year is what he was, but you traded him. What is that for now? You traded him. Let me get that guy back. Getting old, you guys. So Malcolm Brock, you traded away Malcolm Brogdon. You traded away Marcus Smart. You traded away Robert Williams the third. You traded away Grant Williams, who's doing work in Dallas. And you got KP. See, this is why, and, and again, let me bring up, let me spank you stupid Knicks fans that are always talking about trades. Again, don't come to me with them, okay? Because you're going to get, some people say I'm rude. Yeah, I, I'm going to be rude when you bring me that crap. This is why you don't rush to go trading everybody because you think somebody's a superstar, okay? This is why you try to keep the assets that you develop. 
This is why you should ignore the media that says, well, they can't go any farther with this team. How you know, unless you a genie, what we're going to do by the end of this season? So you see what happened here. They traded away very important ancillary pieces that you need to win a chip. And they put their chips in the table on KP. And they weak now. See? So if KP was KP in game one in April, oh, they're going to be tough. They would be very difficult. But that's an iffy proposition. Very iffy proposition. If they want to have him for the playoffs, in my view, they need to reduce his minutes to about 25 a game. That's not like no minutes. You need about 25 a game, basically six minutes a quarter. That's what I would do. And, and, and if I was Boston, but see, that's on them. That's their problem. The way they're doing it now, don't look for him in April now. That's what I'm saying. And that was the weakness that Indiana needed to go off and win, and win that game last night. They came from behind several times, a close game. But you're talking about Indiana versus Boston, who's supposed to be elite. There you go. This is going to be a good opportunity for my Knicks this is why I was watching the game. So that's weakness. Now, speaking of weakness, we're talking now about the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, Milwaukee, of course, got another one of the five best basketball players on planet Earth right now in Giannis Antetokounmpo. So, yes, he's one of the five best basketball players on planet Earth. But they also traded away. A very important piece in Jeru Holiday. I mean, you need defense at the point of attack to win in the NBA. Period. And if you are weak at the point of attack, you are vulnerable because you're allowing opposing, especially guards, to get in the lane. And that's all kind of havoc on the professional level in the league. Okay? So... They went and they got rid of, or they traded, I shouldn't say got rid of, but they, they moved Joe Rue Holiday to get Dame Dollar. I hear you. And Dame Dollar is a tremendous offensive talent. There is no doubt about it. He is. But where's your defense? Where's your defense at? At the point of attack. What are you going to do at the point of attack? Where's your defense at? So right now, okay, Milwaukee. They're doing all right. Their differential is three. They're doing all right. But look, they give up 118 points per game. What that telling me is they score 121, give up 118. So what they're saying is they outscore their opponents. Okay. And they put enough defense out there to hold the opposition just enough so that they can outscore their opponents. Let me tell you something. That ain't going to work in the playoffs. That ain't going to work in the playoffs. See, in the playoffs, the game is low scoring. It's half court. It's physical. Okay? So that ain't going to work. It worked when they had Giroud Holiday because they was playing some tight defense at the point of attack with Giroud. But they don't have Giroud. And then they need Middleton to be Middleton. And now you're dealing with a guy that's in the same classification as Anthony Ambulance. Poor guy. I mean, he made over a hundred million. You know, he probably banked over a hundred million dollars. So he ain't that he ain't poor. But I'm saying they're gonna have a difficult situation over the long term. Okay. Now, right now it's early in the season, and don't let Dame Dollar tweak an ankle. Then they done. Even Malik Beasley, he's their best perimeter defender, and he's doing good. He's playing real good now. But that ain't gonna be enough. Mm -mm. Ain't going to be enough. So they give up 118 points per game. Okay? Where does that rank? Let me see here. So the Knicks, of course, number one in opponent's points per game. But where does that rank? That puts them at, oh, man, they ninth in the East. No, wait. Tenth in the East. Tenth in opponent's points per game. No. Burning it on 11th. They tied with Detroit. Look at that. So, you know, uh, I'm very confident. 
So like I said, tonight is an early season game. So 50-50, I give the Knicks 50 you know, chance when they going into Milwaukee. I get it. I like our chances tonight, though. I do like our chances. Um, you know, I do like our chances. They they you know, <laughs> Milwaukee better come correct if they want to beat the Knicks tonight. That's what I'm saying. We we the Knicks are at the point now where when you when you're an opponent and you're going like tonight, you're gonna to play the Knicks, you better come correct. Because they will beat you. Let me tell you. I think you already know in Knicks Nation. Uh, Brunson is that dude. He's that dude. Okay. Somebody said, and this Sunday, somebody suggested, I think it was Apex. Shout out to Apex. Apex said, uh, why don't you do a segment on, um, what did he say? On guys you were right about and guys you were wrong about. Well, I was wrong. About Jalen Brunson. You know, we're going to do, we're going to probably talk about that Sunday in terms of that, but I was wrong about Brunson. I thought he was good, you know, and, and, but I, for, at first I said, no, I didn't want him because I wanted quick to get them keys. But then it became obvious and evident when you seen World Wide West, when you seen uh, the Don, when you seen Allen Houston show up at a Dallas game. I mean, they was making it obvious and evident, you know, they were going to get him. And then they signed his father. It was obvious. I didn't like it. So then they were talking about $80 million. And I was like, $80 million? No, I was thinking 60. Then I saw him in the playoffs. And I said, oh, okay. I say 80 would be the number. But they turned around and gave him 100. This made me a little concerned. I knew the boy could play. He was obviously sure he could play in the playoffs. So that gave me hope. But... A hundred million? Now looking back on it, that's about half what he should have got. I mean, looking at it now. So I was wrong on JB. <clears throat> and again, I, I err on the side of our players. Once a guy's a New York Nick, like quickly, as much as I love Deuce and wanted him to start, I understood why quickly should start. And I was like, let's give quickly the key. Then somebody said, well, you didn't like DiVincenzo either. The reason I didn't like DiVincenzo is because we got Dukes. And I was like, I want Dukes to get those minutes. It wasn't that I was against DiVincenzo as a player. I'm pro Knicks. So when somebody's wearing orange and blue, especially when you know and you watch them work real hard to get where they at, you want them to get the opportunity. Okay? So I wanted quick to get the keys. He didn't. JB got it. But now we got a superstar. Superstar at the point guard spot. I know some of y'all are going to say, you're not a superstar yet because some of y'all think you know everything, but he's a superstar. JB is that dude. So he's coming for you every night. Okay? One thing we could say about this Knicks team, as a team, they're coming for you every night. Now, the only one that wouldn't do that in the past was Juju. There were some nights he decided to take off. Then there's some nights he decided to take over. But with JB running the show, they coming at you every night. Okay? Milwaukee knows this. I like our chances. And as the season progresses, I really like our chances. So, right now, the Knicks are a game and a half behind Milwaukee. They can pick up a full game if they beat them tonight. They can pick up a full game on them if they beat them tonight. And they'd be basically alone in the fourth seed. So it's a pretty big game in terms of the standings. Um, yeah, like I said, it's still early, but it's starting to, the standings. When you get to game 20, the standings start to matter. You know, game 20, then 30, then 40. And the more, of course, you get toward 82, the more intense it gets. So here's the start of, of this right here. So this is a big game for New York. Um, the only, this is the my concern in terms of injuries for the Knicks is, you know, this is going to sound weird when I first say it, but hear me out. Evan Fournier. You say, why Evan Fournier? Because I don't care if he plays or not. But notice, he's going to miss the game tonight because of a non-COVID illness. That means he might have the flu. You know, he could just be having food poisoning. But I've seen this on other teams recently. What that tells me from past history is the flu is going around the league. Because, you know, these guys are around each other all the time, practice, you know, sometimes hanging out and all that, hanging out with each other's families and all that. So the stuff spreads. So for the Knicks, if he's the only one missing the game for a non-COVID illness tonight, that's good. Because if they play tonight and they win, 
you know, if somebody gets sick because of if it spreads, you know, they they got to play again in two nights in Las Vegas or something and they might lose or whatever. But they got time. My point is to come back from this illness, let it go run, it, run its course before they got to meet Toronto on December 11th, you know, here at the Garden. So that's what we're talking about. So that non-COVID illness thing, it, it could be dangerous. So hopefully the guys quarantine this brother and keep themselves, you know, with fluids and all that so they don't get sick. That's the only thing. I'm, that's my concern going into tonight's game. We're really not tonight. I'm hoping nobody else catches it. But we're really talking about, you know, going forward with the COVID illness, non-COVID illness, you know. So that could be a problem. But anyway, aside from that, I like our chances. Let's see Milwaukee's uh, Pat Connaughton is out tonight. That's a big one because he's a, he's one of their jump shooters. Jay Crowder all behind is out. I don't even know who Andrew Andre Jackson Jr. is, but he's day to day whatever. He's one of them no names that have come out and hit five threes on us that we never heard of. But because they'll let no names like that shoot, but we just got to really be ready to play. So basically, Connaughton is their most important piece. That's out. He's a big time shooter for them uh, using Giannis. They'll miss him. So at his spot right now, you got, of course, you you know, you same starters, Dame Dollar, Malik Beasley, Chris Milton, Giannis Lopez, Bobby Portis. Connington is usually a big piece for them coming off the bench. But then you're going to have Marjan Bochamp. Young boy playing pretty good, Bochamp. He's coming in playing pretty good. And then they got Cameron Payne, the vet behind Dame Dollar. Honestly, I like our chances tonight. I keep saying that. I like the way this is looking for us. So they just got to show up and be Knicks tonight. JB got to come out and do his thing, which I'm 99% sure he's going to do. Don't let Juju come with the right attitude today. Don't let that happen because it's curtains. And if RJ happens to take off them Ray Charles glasses tonight and starts hitting threes, they in trouble. And don't let Mitch Rob start dominating the offensive glass. You see how many weapons we have? You see how many ways we can beat people? I'm liking this situation. 50-50 tonight. I think we got 50% chance of walking into Milwaukee and walking out with a W. Let's hope we get that. Y'all enjoy the game. Y'all enjoy your Tuesday. Y'all enjoy your life. Shalom.